Frédéric Chopin had devoted all his life to composing wonderful masterpieces on the piano, leaving behind a great legacy. He inspired most of the composers who followed him. Chopin was a musical genius, having produced more than 100 masterpieces. But how did he become Poland's greatest composer? In today's video, we're going to have a look at the life of Frédéric Chopin. Chopin was born on March 1, 1810 in Zelazoa Wola, a small village in the Duchy of Warsaw, now known as Poland. He was given the name Frédéric Franzisk Chopin. His father Nicholas was a French immigre who was working as a bookkeeper. He then met Justina Krasizanowska, Chopin's mother. After Chopin was born, Nicholas later found employment as a tutor for aristocratic families, especially in Warsaw. When Chopin was eight months old, Nicholas found a job as a French teacher at the Warsaw Lyceum, which Chopin himself attended from 1823 to 1826. When Chopin was in his infancy, he would always be moved whenever he listened to his mother or his elder sister as they played the piano. By the time he was six years old, he would try to recreate the tunes he had heard and come up with new ones in the process. A year later, he was introduced to piano lessons by the 61-year-old Wojcic Zuni, who was an all-round musician. Soon after, the student became better than the master as he discovered a more original approach to the piano on his own. He grew and changed without being limited by academic rules and formal discipline. Because of his originality, he would be invited to play at private soirees. His first public appearance was when he was eight, when he played in a charity concert. Three years later, he was privileged to play in front of the Russian Tsar Alexander I in Warsaw. He not only started playing when he was very young, but he also composed his first work when he was seven. He wrote the Polonaise in G minor, which was printed and even played during a parade by the military band. He went on to write other Polonaises, Mazurkas, Variations, Picasses, and a Rondo. Because of this, his family took him to the newly formed Warsaw Conservatory of Music when he was 16 years old, which was directed by the Polish composer Joseph Elsner. Shortly after Chopin joined the school, Elsner realized his full potential and imagination. But even before Elsner could notice him, Chopin had already started showing an interest in the folk music of the Polish countryside. Thereafter, Elsner saw this, Chopin was taken through a course of instruction in harmony and composition. He was given the freedom to develop a high degree of individuality in his piano playing. In search of a wider musical experience, Chopin's parents sent him off to Vienna, where Chopin made his very first debut in 1829. He then performed at a second concert, which was his breakthrough. As he returned home, he prepared himself for greater things abroad. During this time, he wrote his piano concerto number no. 2 in F minor, 1829, and his piano concerto number no. 1 in E minor. 1830. He also wrote other works for piano and orchestra, which all showed his brilliance and originality in piano style. Between 1829 and 1832 was also when he wrote his first etudes, from which they made him and others understand the technical difficulties that came with his new style of playing. In July 1831, Chopin decided to head to Paris. Soon after he arrived, he immediately realized that he had found a perfect place for his talents. He did not hesitate to establish ties with other Polish emigres and a young generation of composers. These included Franz Liszt and Hector Berlioz, and for a while Vincenzo Bellini and Felix Mendelssohn. It was not until Chopin had a brief period of so much uncertainty that Chopin decided to settle into his main business in life, which was teaching and composing. These two would give him a high income, setting him free from giving concerts, which he did not really like. Initially, both professional and financial problems began. After his concert debut in February 1832 in Paris, Chopin realized that his taste and style of playing were not appealing to the larger crowd. This is because most people were already exposed to Franz Schubert and Ludwig van Beethoven. However, he got a new beginning after he was introduced to the wealthy Rothschild banking family later in the same year. It did not take long for Chopin to become a favorite in the great houses of Paris. He was highly regarded as both a recyclist and a teacher. By then, he had some new piano works, which included two startlingly poetic books of etudes written between 1829 and 1836, the Ballade in G minor, written between 1831 and 1835, and Fantasi Impromptu, written in 1835 
among many other smaller works. The smaller works included mazurkas and polonaises, which were inspired by Chopin's strong nationalist feelings. In 1836, he met the free living novelist Aurore de Vant, who was known by the name George Sand. They started working together in the summer of 1838. Shortly after, they went to spend the winter on the island of Mallorca with her children, Maurice and Solange. However, Chopin became ill during their trip and was later diagnosed with tuberculosis. He did not have a suitable concert piano where he could play, so he could no longer compose, which made his physical health deteriorate even further. Since his health was not getting any better, they had to relocate to Marseille in early March 1839, and thankfully he recovered in under three months. They then spent the summer of 1839 at Nahant, Sand's country home, where Chopin composed most of his masterpieces. His new works have received much widespread acclaim that they were in high demand. He did not only compose miniatures, but even extended works in the years 1840 to 1845, such as the Fantasie in F minor, the Barcarolle, the Polonaise Fantasie, and ballads in A flat major, Sonata in B minor. In this country, he found peace and time to perfect his works. Years later, his relationship with Sand started to become strained, as he would be moodier and petulant. Some say that this behavior comes from a certain type of epilepsy. But by 1848, both Chopin and Sand had gone their separate ways, and they were both too proud to reconcile. Having been broken in spirit and depressed by this, he did not pay much attention to his health anymore. Later, he accepted an invitation to England and Scotland. He seemed pretty enthusiastic, as he also went through an exhausting round of lessons and appearances at some of the fashionable parties. He was unable to compose again due to his fatigue from all this. By then, his health got way worse. He made his last public appearance on a concert platform at the Guildhall in London on November 16, 1848, where he played for the benefit of Polish refugees. He then returned to Paris, where he passed away on October 17, 1849 at the age of 39. His body was buried without the heart at the cemetery of Père Lachey, while his heart was buried at the Church of the Holy Cross in Warsaw. Chopin had a way of playing the piano that was just unique to him. Over the years, he composed 61 mazurkas, 16 polonaises, 26 preludes, 27 etudes, 21 nocturnes, 20 waltzes, 3 sonatas, 4 ballads, 4 scherzos, and 4 impromptus. He also produced many individual pieces, such as Barcarolle, Opus 60, 1846, Fantasia, Opus 49, 1841, and Percu, Opus 57, 1845, as well as 17 Polish songs. By composing these unique pieces, he became one of the most known musicians in history. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe.